We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Ches Amid Beis and Maseches Bab Metzia. This is Bab Metzia Daf Thirty Eight B. And the previous summit, the Gemara said that you sell the oil that putrefied or the honey that spoiled. That was the opinion of the Chacham. And the question the Gemara asks is Lamai Chaz. Well, what does it fit for? As Rashi says, Lamai Chaz with the Katani Mochan. It's saying you sell them. Obviously, there's someone that wants to buy it for some purpose. What purpose is that? And the Gemara says, Shem and Chazi Legaldoi, the oil is something that can be used by the tanners, and Devash Leksisha Degamli, and the honey can be used for the wounds on a camel. Rashi says, Legaldoi, Losuch Oros, they use it to tan the hides, and Leksisha Degamla for the wounds on a camel, Leksisha Sha'al Hagomel, for the wound that's on the camel, Shagabo Kosher Shemasukov, Machmas Masui, because of the burden, the camel is injured, and so therefore use the honey for that purpose. Again, Leksisha Degamli for the wounds on the camel. And the Gemara continues, Vachachachamim Omer and the Chacham him say, Osa lahem takane, you do, do a solution for these items that are spoiling Umochran, and he should sell them. Umochran bebezin, he should sell them in bezin. And the Gemara says, My takanta of it, what kind of solution is this? What the, Gemara, what the Gemara means to ask is, these things have already spoiled, what more is going to happen if you don't sell it at this point? And the Gemara says to that, Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, Lekankanim, we're talking about to the vessels that are holding these items, the vessels can be ruined. As Rashi says, Lekankanav hakli shahaya besocho, the vessel that the item is in, it's going to be ruined if they continue to remain in that vessel, and that's why the Chacham are saying you should sell these items which have spoiled. And the Gemara continues, What are Rabbi Meir and the Rabbonin arguing about in the Brisa? Rashi explains, Rabbi Meir and What are Rabbi Meir and the Rabbonin arguing about? Since we've just said that Rabbi Meir admits that if they're losing, if they're deteriorating at a faster than normal rate, Rabbi Meir admits that the Shomer sells the item, so what are they arguing about? And the Gemara says to that, Demar Savar Lehefsid Meru B'chashu, one holds that for a great loss there's a concern. But Lehefsid Mu'at Lo Chashu, but there's no concern if it's a minor loss. Umar Savar in the other opinion holds, Lafilu Lehefsid Mu'at Nami Chashu, even if it's a minor loss, there is a concern. Rashi explains, Lehefsid Meruba means, Kegon Yeser Michdei Chesron, and meaning again, if it's deteriorating faster than normal, so that Rabbi Meir is concerned about. But Rabbi Meir is not concerned with Lehefsid Mu'at. Hefsid Mu'at, Kegon Bechdei Chesron, and let's say it deteriorates at the normal, at the normal rate, to Rekoven Peru, in all of these cases, if it's the normal rate, again, that would already be a machlokas between Rabbi Meir and the Rabbanon. Rabbi Meir would say not to do anything, and the Rabbanon would say to sell in that case as well. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Omer, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says, Yimachrim bebezin, again, the situation where a shomer is watching over items and they're being destroyed, so he should sell those items in bezin, says Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Memneshu kameshev aved alabaylam, because that's like returning a lost object to the original owners. And the Gemara says, Itmar, it was stated, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Yaakov, Amr, Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Yaakov says that Rabbi Yochanan says, Halacha Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. The Rava Amar of Nachman and Rava says that Rav Nachman says Halacha Kedivrei Chachamim. The Halacha is like the Chachamim. And the Gemara says, V'amra Rabbi Yochanan Chad Zimna, but didn't Rabbi Yochanan already say this? Meaning, didn't Rabbi Yochanan already say the halach is like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel? The Yomer Rabbi Bar Barachan Amr Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Bar Barachan said that Rabbi Yochanan said, Kol Mokom Sheshana Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel B'Mishnah Seino. Any time Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel is taught in the Mishnah, any time he has an opinion in our Mishnah, halacha Kamosa, the halach is like him. Chutz Mei Arev Vitzidan V'Rayachron, except for these three cases, Arev Tzidan and Rayachron. Other than that, the halach is always like Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel. But here you're quoting Rabbi Yochanan as saying that the Halach is like Rav Shimon Gamliel, as if it's specifically over here. And the Gemara says, There's a machlokas amoroim, exactly what Rabbi Yochanan said. And the Gemara continues, Midraban Shimon ben Gamliel Nishma. From Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, we understand. Again, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel saying, in a case where a shomer is watching over items and they're deteriorating, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel says, you sell the items. So from there, we can understand the Moridin Karov Lenichse Shavui, that we would have a relative descent to the property of a captive. The idea over here is that somebody gets, gets captured, he's not able to watch over his property. So according to Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, a relative, we would appoint a relative to take over that property while this person is being held captive and midrabona nishma from the rabbanon we understand the ain morid in karov lenichse shavay that we would not have a relative descent to the property of somebody that somebody that is held captive and rashi explains again the three cases where we do not pass in like rav shem ben amliel arev beget pasha the case of arev is in parag get pasha in baba basra tzidon memesechas kitten the case of tzidon is found in memesechas kitten and raya then there was raya achrona bedine mominis hasheni shenechelku bishne machlukos there were two arguments that had to do with dine mominis with monetary court cases 
but maybe Shtar Raya Listor Es Hadin, bringing a Shtar Raya to go against the judgment, Barishona, Halacha Kamosa. The point over here is that in the first of those cases, the Halacha is like Rav Shemeng Amliel, Uvachrona in the latter case, Ein Halacha Kamosa, the Halacha is not like him. And then the Gemara said, Amoroin, in what's Machlokas Amoroin, exactly what Rabbi Yochanan said, meaning Rabba Amr Bechlolo Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Rabba says that it's Bechlal, it's in, it was said in general by Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan had a general Halacha that any time the any time Rav Shemeng Amliel is in the Mishnah, the Halacha is like him, except for three cases. For Rabbi Abba Amr Lab Bechlolo Amr Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Abba said, no, it wasn't like a generalization that Rabbi Yochanan said. Eli Yesh Mehen Shalacha Kamosa, there were specific cases where the Halacha is like Rav Shemeng Amliel. And Rashi continues, the Gemara said, Mid Rabban Shimon Nishma Demorid and Karo, from Rabbi Shimon's opinion, we understand that we would have a relative take over that property of a captive, Haroi Liyarish. It means a relative who really could inherit that individual. He'll take over Benich Shava, he'll take over the property of the captive, Lekar Koos Shava, means the land of the captive, La Ovdan or Shomran, to work the land and to watch the land, At Shayavo Habailam until the Bailam, until the owners return. Will the Kamon Pligi Amoroi. Later on, we're going to see this as a Machlokas Amoroi. But the Gemara continues, Umimai, how do we know that the Machlokas Tanoim in the Mishnah between the Rabbonan and Rav Shem ben Gamliel, in terms of the deposit, whether the deteriorating deposits are sold or not, how do we know that's related to the issue of whether we are Morid and Karov L'Nichse Shavoy or not? Because Dilma Adkan Lokomer Rav Shem ben Gamliel Hacha, maybe Rav Shem ben Gamliel only said over here that we sell the deposits that are deteriorating, El Mishum Dekakal Yekarna, because the principle is being destroyed. Avol Hasem, but over there by the land, Hachanami De'en Morid, and maybe we don't have a relative descent to the property because the principle is not being destroyed. Maybe the Rabbanon only say over here that we don't sell the deposit. Either we're following Rav Kahana like we said in the previous summit, or we're following Rav Nachman Rav Yitzchak who said in the previous summit again, each had a different opinion why we don't sell that deposit. Either it's because, like Rav Kahana said, a person prefers his one kav to nine kav from someone else, or it's like Rav Nachman Rav Yitzchak, there's a concern that maybe the owners have designated these, this produce as truma or truma ma- and Meiser, and so maybe that's the reason why the Rabbanon say not to sell. Aval Hasam, but over there, Hachinami de Moridin, maybe we would have a relative take over the property in order to save the property. So, how do you know that these two things are even related? And the Gemara continues one second. But does that really mean to say that these are two separate machloks and they have nothing to do with each other? But Rav Yehuda said that Shmuel said, The halacha is like Rav Shemeng Gamliel. And Shmuel also said, That we do have a relative go down to the property of the captive. So it sounds like those are the same thing. Why is Shmuel paskening like Rav Shemeng Gamliel and also paskening It seems that the two are related. Doesn't that mean that it's all the same reason? And the Gemara says, "Lo, no, trade time in, and it's two separate reasons. The two cases have nothing to do with one another." And the Gemara says, "Hachinam mistavra makes sense to say like that." The Yomar Rava Amar Rav Nachman, because Rava said that Rav Nachman said halacha kedivrei chachamim that the halacha is like the chachamim in our Mishnah. The Yomar Rav Nachman, and yet Rav Nachman said, "Morid and Karov l'nechsei shavui." We do have a relative go down to the property of the captive. El shmami no trade time in inu shmami no. Rather, you see that it is two separate reasons. And the Gemara says, "Indeed, you see that that is the case." And Rashi. He explains Adkan Lo Koamer Rabbi Shimon Hacha Demochon. Rabbi Shimon only says that we sell the the items that have been deposited. El Mishum Dekak Kal Yekarna, because the principle is being destroyed. Im Yanichem Shem. If we keep it here, if we keep it over there by the person watching it, it's destroyed. Aval Gabi Karkos Ukramim by land and vineyards. Aval Bisha Meskalkelos Ktsas. Even though they get a little ruined, Lo Kal Yekarna, you're not losing the principle over there. And then the Gemara said Iker Av Kahana. The Gemara said it could be in our mission of the reason why you're not selling it. And that means to say you're not selling it according to the Rabbon and is either like Rav Kahana. El Rotsa Adam Bekavshalo again, who says that a person wants his kav over the kav the kavin of others. Iker Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchok, or it's following Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchok. Damar Shema Ason Shrumu Meiser. Again, Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchok said the reason why the Rabbanon and the Mishnah say not to sell the property is because maybe the the original owner made it Shrumu and Meiser. And then the Gemara said to trade timing in. Does that mean to say that there are two separate reasons? Meaning Mas Nisin Benechzei Meaning again, these two cases: the case of our Mishnah, whether you sell the items that have been deposited, and the issue of the property of the captive. Are they two separate reasons? meaning it could be somebody holds to sell the fruits that are being destroyed but does not necessarily say that we're going to have a relative descent to the property of the of the captive and the Gemara continues Itmar it was stated if you have someone who's taken captive Rav Amar Ein Moridin Karov Lenechasov. Rav says we do not have a relative go down to take care of his property. And Shmuel Amar Shmuel says Moridin Karov Lenechasov. We do have a relative go down and take care of his property. 
And the Gemara explains, Bishashamu Boshames, in a situation where they heard that the person who was taken captive has died, Kulial Malo Pligi Demorid, and everybody agrees that you certainly have a Karov take over the property. Ki Pligi, when do they argue, Bishalo Shamu Boshames, in a case where they didn't hear that he died, Rav Amar Ein Morid, and Rav says, We do not have a Karov take the property. Deal Mamafsid Luke, because we're afraid that he might cause the property to lose value. He might essentially cause the property to be destroyed. Ushmuel Amar and Shmuel says, Moridin, we do have someone go down to the property. Kevin Da Amar Mar, since the master said, Shaiminan Luhu Ka'aris, that we evaluate for the person as though he is a sharecropper, so he essentially has a stake in the property. So Lomafsid Luhu, so therefore he's not going to cause the property to deteriorate. And Rashi explains, Karov, a relative, means Haroi Yarsho means a relative who is fit to inherit this person. They ain't Karov Mimeno, and nobody is closer in terms of relationship to this individual than this person. And the Gemara said, Bisheshamu Bo Shemes Kuliyamalo Pligi Demorid. And if they heard that the person died, everybody agrees that this relative does manage the property. Dim Yavo HaBailam Kodim Shiyochal Zahaperos. Because if the Bailam do come before this person who's managing the property has a chance to get some of the produce from the property, Yitol Zeh Kesharisin. So then he'll just take like any other sharecropper. The Yachzer Hashar will return the rest of the owner. Vim Yavo Edim Shemes. And if Edim come, if witnesses come that the person actually died, Yiresh HaKol. So then he'll inherit all of it. Mavsid Luhu. But then again, there is a concern that he might cause the property to deteriorate. It means Veloye Zavel HaKarkos, he's not going to fertilize the property. V'Yizrem Tamid will plant them all the time. V'Yachishem, he'll weaken the property. That's what we're concerned about. But the other opinion says, we don't have such a concern. Kevon Do'amar Mar Lekamon, since the Master said later on, V'chulon, V'chulam, Shomin Lohem Ka'aris, that we always evaluate these individuals like a sharecropper, meaning Im Yavo HaBaila, meaning if the owner should return, if the owners come, Shomin Lozechelko B'chol Shana Sha'avad Bo, we evaluate that this person gets a portion every year which he worked the field. He'll get a portion keminag, a risoir, just like whatever the custom is of the sharecroppers of that city. In mechza, in shlish, in revia, whatever the custom is, whether it be half of the produce or a third of the produce or a quarter of the produce and therefore he has a stake and he's going to make sure that the property is not going to deteriorate. And the Gemara continues, Mesra, we have a question from the following, Bryce, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Mimashma shenemar v'chora api v'arak diyeschem, from the fact that it says that I'm going to be angry and I will kill you. So from that part of the Pasuk alone, Yodayani, I know that it means shenishoseyam almonos, that their wives are going to be widows, because if you're going to kill the, the husbands, the wives will obviously be widows. Uvenehem yisomem, and I know that their children will be orphans. Elamat ha'amad lomer v'hayu neshechem v'gomer, so why does the Pasuk go on to say that? If it's obvious, it says that their wives are going to be widows, etc. What it teaches is, is that the punishment is the wives will seek to remarry. And we won't let them because it won't be clear that their husbands have actually died. And the children will want to go down and take over the property of their fathers. And we won't let them. So you see from this b'risa that we don't let them manage the property. And again, that was a machlokas amoroim before. Rav said we don't let them manage the property. But Shmuel said that we do let them manage the property. Therefore, it's a question on Shmuel. And the Gemara answers on my Rav, Rav says, What it might mean in this b'risa is that we're not going to let them go down and sell the property, but maybe in terms of managing the property, they would be allowed to manage the property. And the Gemara continues, There was a case like this in Nahardoi. Rav Sheshesh answered from this b'risa, and he assumed that the b'risa means that they're not allowed to manage the property. Rav Amram, Rav Amram said to him, Maybe what it really means is they can't go down and sell the property, but maybe they are allowed to manage the property. Amar Leisa, he said back to him, Maybe you're from Pumbadisa. That they try to enter an elephant in the eye of the needle, meaning they say these kinds of forced answers. That's a forced answer that you are giving. But it's similar to the case of the wives. You have to compare the children to the wives. Just like over there, it means totally. They're not able to remarry at all. So to over here, it means they have no rights to the property. They can't even manage the property. And the Gemara continues, Whether or not a relative is allowed to go down to the property of the captive, Tanoihi, that's actually a machlokas tanoim. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, Hayored lenichse shavoy. Let's say somebody goes down to the property of one who's a captive. Ein motzi and oso miyad. We don't take it away from him. Vlaod, not only that, ela afilu shama shem emash mishen uvoin. Even if he hears that this person who really owns the property is on his way, the kadam atolish, and he quickly takes some of the produce. V'yachlan, he consumes it. Harezah zoriz v'niskar, he's 
considered somebody who was a Zoris, he was quick to do what he needed to do in order to profit, and he thereby profits. And this is what's considered property of Shavuyin. Let's say his father, his brother, somebody else who would bequeath him the property. They travel far away overseas. And they heard that this person died. That's considered to be Nechzei Shavu. That's why if he descends to the property, because again, that's a situation where they heard that the person died. Let's say somebody goes down to property that's Natushim. That also is some kind of abandoned property. Rashi will explain. The Gemara will also explain. But if you go to that kind of property, then we do take it away from him. He's not allowed to take that property. What is considered Nechzei Natushim? If his father or his brother or one of those who bequeath him property, they travel overseas. And it was not heard. They did not hear that the person died. That's considered somebody, since you didn't hear that the person died, that's considered to be Natushim. And that's why we do take away the property. However, the Brisa continues, And Rav Shimon Gamliel says, I heard that the Natushim are the same as the Shavuyan, and we do not take away the property from the relatives. Relative, and that's the Machlokas Tanoim. The Tanakhama says we take away the property from the relative, and Rav Shem Ben Gamliel says that is not the case. And the Brisa continues, Hayored Lenichsei Retushim, if somebody goes down to the property of Retushim, which will also be explained, Motzino Somiyada, we take that away from him, we take that away from him as well. Vielohe Nichsei Retushim, and the following are Nichsei Retushim, Hare Shaya Ave, Voach, Voach, and Minhamorishan Khan. If his father, his brother, somebody who's going to bequeath him property is here, the Eino Yodei Lehechan Halcho, but he doesn't know where they went to, so that's considered to be Retushim. And the Gemara says, Maishna Hanach de Karalu Natushim, what's the difference that the first cases are called Natushim? And what's the difference in the second cases that they're called Retushim? And Rashi explains again in the case of Shavoy, that's where they heard that the person had died. Vitalash Pero Shanazu, if he takes the produce from this year, Hareza Zaris, it's considered to be a Zaris. He's Maher Lizkos Bishalo, he was quick to take what is his. Beteram Yafsid before he would lose out. Viniskar Bizrizuso, and he's profited through his Rizus. Vielohe Nechse Shavuyan, and the following are Nechse Shavuyan, Da'amar Ein Motsino Samyad, where we don't take it away from him. And then there was a Machlokas Tanoim, again, Rav Shimon Gamliel said that the Natushim, Shahan Natushim, and the Natushim are the same as the Shvuyan. The Ein Motsi and Miyadu, we don't take the property away. We don't take the produce away from the relative. Nechse Natushin, Shahan Nechasim Natushin. Again, Nechse Natushin means that the property is Natushin, as we'll say in a minute. And Nechse Retushin, Shahan Nechasim Retushim. That means the property is Retushim. Ula Kamon Mefarish Lahu, and the Gemara later is going to explain these terms. Retushin Mashma Sha'ozvum Baila Midaitam. Retushim means to say that the owners left, but it was with, the, it was like willingly. Vahalchulam, they just left. To cave on the since what they should have done was given instructions, I want my heirs to take over my property, and they didn't give that instruction, you see from that that they don't really want that. That means the owners were taken against their will. For example, they were taken captive. And that's the Machlokas Tanoim we see right over here. The Rabbi Shimon Savar Morid and Rabbi Shimon holds that the relative does descend to the property. But Rabbon and Savri ain't Morid and the Rabbon and say that the relative does not descend to the property. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daflamites Amud Aleph.